Hi, I'm Dawn from the blog Parkinsonsandus.com. Today we are going to talk all things green smoothie. Green smoothies are a fantastic source of nutrients and fiber and as a busy care partner they're fabulous to keep you going throughout your day. A lot of people do ask me what I put in my green smoothie and it can get quite confusing because there are a lot of different ingredients you can put in a smoothie but we're gonna break it down. I'm gonna teach you how I make my green smoothie. We're gonna talk about a lot of the different ingredients that you can put in a smoothie. But before we get started, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and that notification bell below so that you don't miss any of my videos. I post one video and one blog post every single week where I provide nourishing recipes, joyful living tips, and support for caregivers everywhere. I also wanted to let you know that today I'm going to teach you how to make a classic green smoothie. But I also created a free e-guide for you where I have 10 green smoothie recipes and I will put that link in the description below for you to grab. It's a free e-guide and it has 10 beautiful green smoothie recipes. So. Let's get started. Before we begin actually blending up the classic green smoothie, I just want to discuss with you some of the different ingredients that you can put in your smoothie. So the first ingredient in a green smoothie is greens. Now I like to mix up my greens and I usually use two different greens in my smoothie. This is an organic romaine and I like the romaine because it's for me, it has a little bit of a milder flavor. So I usually will use one mild flavored green and then one more hearty, stronger flavor like chard or arugula. So this is our romaine. And then in here, this I bought, this is a green leaf lettuce. So it's a little different than the romaine, but again, it's a lighter, milder flavor. So this would be considered for me my milder flavored green to use. I have um, organic kale. This is a nice one. So I like to combine like a milder green and then a heartier green. So I will do like a romaine and then a kale or I'll do a green leaf and a kale because that's a little bit of a stronger flavor. And then I also use um, arugula. I really love arugula. It gives your smoothie almost a little bit of a chocolatey flavor. So if you are going for like a um, chocolate flavored smoothie with cacao or something like that, I would recommend using arugula. Um, for me, this is a stronger green, so I will combine it with a romaine or I will combine it with a green leaf lettuce. And then the other green I wanted to talk about is a chard. Chard again is a uh, stronger flavor. So this is a red leaf chard. They also have green leaf and they have rainbow chard. So actually I think this is rainbow chard. But for the chard, I don't usually use the stems in the green. I will like, like the dinosaur kale, the same thing with the thick stem. I'll usually just strip the leaves from the stem and use just the greens. So this is a really good green as well. Um, again, loaded with lots of fiber and nutrients, but I will usually mix this green again with a lighter, milder green like the romaine or the green leaf. So those are the different types of greens I use. Again, you can mix it up and experiment and see what works for you. This here is a red leaf lettuce. So again, it's a milder green, but I like it as well. Anything that you find colorful is going to be loaded with um, nutrients. So again, this is a milder lettuce, so I will use like a red leaf with an arugula or with a kale but similar to the romaine and similar to the green leaf lettuce, they're a milder flavor. But I do recommend mixing up your greens because each green has its own benefit, its own um, set of nutrients, and so I would never stick with one green. I know a lot of people will use spinach, and they'll, because it, they say it's a milder flavor, they will use spinach every single day. 
and spinach has a higher amount of oxalates and so I don't recommend um, using spinach in your smoothies every day if you're going to drink green smoothies every day. So that's why I always recommend just mix it up. Always mix up your greens. If you buy a couple heads of greens for one week then the next week mix it up and buy something different. Okay so let's talk about some of the other ingredients. Let's talk about the fruit. I really like bananas. I usually will freeze the bananas, so I wait until these get really ripe and spotty. Um, when they get those brown spots on them is actually when they're perfect to um, throw in the freezer. And when you do freeze your bananas, you need to peel them first. So just peel your bananas. You can break them in half or quarters and then just put them in like a glass Tupperware or a Ziploc bag and put them in your freezer, but you do need to peel them first. So bananas are wonderful for smoothies. They really hide the green. If, you're, if you don't like greens or you can always taste the green in your smoothie, the banana really does the trick. It really hides the green flavor, the green taste. Some people get worried about eating too many bananas. They think it's high in sugar and it's too much sugar. Bananas are a wonderful nutrient filled high fiber food so I actually never worry about the fruit I eat ever. I am perfectly comfortable eating as much fruit as I desire every single day so I worry more about the junky processed food that I put in my body versus fruit. If you're a diabetic and trying to minimize your sugar intake Yes, you can ease off on the banana, but that said, I do know diabetics who do eat bananas, so. But if you are concerned about the greens taste in your smoothie, I highly recommend freezing bananas and putting a banana in your smoothie. It really does mask the flavor. And as you start getting used to the taste of a green smoothie, you won't feel like you need to mask it quite as much. So then if you wanna back off on a banana, or if you get tired of your bananas, you can back off. But to start, if you're new to drinking green smoothies, I highly recommend um, using frozen bananas. We also have oranges. You can actually put in any fruit you want. In the free smoothie guide, I have a recipe. It's kind of like a creamsicle, an orange creamsicle smoothie. It does have greens in it, but um, it shows you how to kind of mask the green. And of course, we use oranges for that. So. Oranges are wonderful, berries are really wonderful, loaded with lots of antioxidants and fiber and nutrients. So here I have some organic raspberries and some organic blueberries and um, again some organic strawberries. So berries are wonderful, they give it such a light and refreshing um, taste to a smoothie. Also you can use, I like to use zucchini or you can use frozen broccoli stems. It's really good to kind of thicken up your smoothie if you want it to be kind of like a milkshake. And also um, frozen cauliflower is great too. That really kind of thickens it up. The things that kind of thicken up a green smoothie that give it kind of that milkshake uh, texture would be frozen cauliflower, zucchini, broccoli stems are wonderful, and some people do put in um, a bit of an avocado. To me, that makes it almost too creamy, um, and I just love avocados. It, they do have a lot of fat in them, so I kind of try to minimize my avocados, um, and I would much prefer having an avocado on toast than putting it in my smoothie. So but it does make it a little bit thick. So zucchini, cauliflower, broccoli stems, and avocado um, would be the things to kind of thicken up your smoothie. Let's talk about the milks now. I like to use, let's see, I like to use organic soy milk. That's one of my favorites for um, a creamier, thicker, kind of sweeter texture, or um, flaxseed. Now all the milks that I do use are unsweetened and I try to get them as pure as I can. Sometimes I'll even make my milks, but just for this video I kind of wanted to show you some alternatives. So this is the organic unsweetened soy milk. I really like this. Um, like I said, it gives it a more creamy, thicker uh, taste. 
So this is good for that. And then I really like this unsweetened flax milk. Now to me, flax milk tastes the most like dairy milk in my eyes. Not, not a whole fat milk, but maybe like a 2% milk. Um, I'm not a big fan of almond milk. I feel like it um, is a little bit watery. So I tend to use, these are the two I tend to use, soy milk or flax milk. I also really like cashew milk or macadamia nut milk is beautiful. So those would be kind of my go-to milks. Now let's talk about all the little seeds and powders that you can put in your smoothie, but you definitely don't have to. This is where I think people kind of get anxious and nervous about how to make a green smoothie or what they should put in it. And these are just things to kind of add on to a green smoothie. A green smoothie is basically your greens, your fruits, and your dairy, and your, that's all. But then you can kind of go crazy with adding the powders and the seeds and stuff like that. And they do have benefit and there's some great reasons to add them, but it's not like it's a necessity. The main things are your fruit and your grains and you can't go wrong with that. But let's talk about them just so you know. Um, for the seeds, there is organic ground flax seed, which I love. If I'm doing the flax milk, then I probably will not do the ground flax seed. But I do love, I, I'll usually put in like maybe one or two tablespoons. Now, just so you know, with the ground flax seed or actually any seed, um, it's important to store them in the fridge. They preserve better, they hold their nutrient value better. So, just an FYI. So we have the flax seed or organic chia seeds. These are all the seeds that I like. And then this is organic hemp seed. So we have the hemp seed, the flax seed, and the chia seeds. These are all wonderful. They're loaded with nutrients. They're loaded with fiber, lots of vitamins, and they have healthy fats. So it's great to put in your smoothie. You can put in like maybe one or two tablespoons, but it's not a necessity, just so you know. Now, if you're wanting to make a chocolate smoothie, this is what I would recommend, an, an organic cacao powder. I love this. I'll use this with an arugula, like a heavier uh, green, and it's lovely, like a um, almost like a chocolate milkshake. And then, let's see, we can use some shredded coconut. is always nice to put in a green smoothie, but again, it's not a necessity. So then there's the super greens. There's like, this is a super green powder. It has wheatgrass, kale, moringa, and spirulina. And this is just a moringa powder. All of these uh, greens are, again, not a necessity but it's geared towards reducing inflammation. That's why a lot of people put them in their smoothie. It's to um, build up your immunity, build up your immune system, and to decrease inflammation. But that said, you will build up your immunity and you will decrease inflammation just by having greens and fruit. I mean, you can't go wrong there. So don't feel like you have to put that stuff in. But down the road, once you kind of get comfortable making a green smoothie, you can experiment with it and it's kind of fun to play with. So let's talk about sweeteners. For me, the frozen bananas are the best sweetener, but you can also use things like a date. This is a, these are medjool dates. Dates are wonderful to sweeten up smoothies and you can even use a uh, maple syrup. This is a pure organic dark maple syrup. So those are the two that I like to use. Um, but like I said, I, I, I don't use them too much. My main sweetener is a frozen banana. But if you do not like bananas or you don't want to put a banana in, then to sweeten it up you can always use dates or pure maple syrup. Or you can also use honey if you um, like honey. And I think that is all. I think we've talked about all the ingredients. So we're gonna get started on making a classic green smoothie. Okay, so now I'm going to teach you how to make a classic green smoothie. This is the basis of all green smoothies. Once you have this down, then you can experiment with other ingredients and just kind of play with it. But this is your classic, your basic, 
and this is what I drink almost every single day. So I start out with romaine lettuce and we're going to do about three cups of romaine lettuce. So I don't really measure it out. I usually just kind of eyeball it. And when in doubt, add more. So let's see, we'll do about that much. Now I'm gonna go wash this and then I will be back. Okay, these are all washed. One thing to note is make sure to really wash your greens. Um, I know it's easy and tempting to just grab it from the bag and throw it in, but you can get sick. You can get salmonella, you can get different kinds of bacterial um, issues if you don't wash your greens. So just make sure to wash your greens thoroughly as well. All right, so we have three cups of romaine lettuce. Break it up. And I always put in my greens first, and then the other ingredients like the zucchini, or if you're gonna add broccoli or anything like that, the heavier ingredients I put on top, because that way it kind of pushes the greens down to the bottom when you're blending. So from there we have three cups of romaine, or about six, large um, leaves of organic romaine. And now I'm going to do about two cups of organic kale. That's one. Again, you just kind of eyeball it. Two. And then we're gonna use one half of a zucchini. I'm gonna go wash this, okay. Just kind of slice it up a little bit. Okay, so now we have three cups of romaine, two cups of baby kale, and a half a zucchini. Now we're going to add the frozen fruit. Okay, so here I have my frozen fruit. I have organic mangoes and these are my frozen bananas. We're gonna add about one cup of mango. Again, no need to measure, just kinda eyeball it. And then we're gonna add one frozen banana. I should have broke that up. Okay, so again, we have three cups of romaine, two cups of kale, half a zucchini, one cup of frozen mango, and one banana. You could stop right here. That's a beautiful smoothie. You could just add some milk and blend away. But for this recipe, I'm gonna continue on and add a few seeds, and I'm actually gonna add some protein powder as well. So we have our ground flax seed, and we're gonna add one tablespoon. And because I'm using soy milk this time, that's why I'm adding the flax seed. If I were using flax milk, then I wouldn't need, feel the need to use flax seed. And then I am going, just for fun, I'm going to use a, this is a plant protein. Um, I am not real particular about my protein powders. I usually just get like some sort of vanilla and I try to find as clean of a protein powder as I can find. But again, like my greens, I mix them up. I don't stick to any one particular powder. So then we're gonna just add about a tablespoon or so of that. Okay, and then we are going to add, I like to add about six ice cubes. Again, I like my smoothies kind of thick and slushy like a milkshake. So for me, adding ice helps with that. But if you don't wanna add ice, I know people think it waters it down. Um, I, I don't find that. I'm perfectly happy with the way it tastes. So I always add about six ice cubes to all of my smoothies. Add a few. About six. Again, it doesn't have to be. It can be six to eight. That's fine. Okay, and then the last thing I add is my milk. So for this, I'm going to use the unsweetened soy milk. And it's about a cup to a cup and a half. I don't measure. I have done it for so long, I just kind of feel it out. 
All right, and now we're gonna blend it up. So this usually makes about one and a half. I usually make a big one for me and a smaller one for Doug, my guy with Parkinson's. He likes green smoothies, but doesn't love them. So he knows they're good for him, so he does drink them, but I usually drink the larger one. So let's see how this looks. The little one first. Nice and smooth. Ooh, perfect. The texture is just like a milkshake, which I like. Okay, so these are our smoothies. I will put a top on, Doug. And that is how you make a green smoothie, a classic green smoothie. So thanks for watching this video. I hope it helped to clarify how to make a simple green smoothie. And again, if you want more green smoothie recipes, you can grab that free e-guide in the description below. And if you want to be part of the Parkinson's and Us community, I would love that. There is a link in the description below. You can just click on it, sign up, and you will receive nourishing recipes, joyful living tips, and support for caregivers everywhere straight to your inbox. And don't forget to hit that subscribe button below. I post one video and one blog post every single week to support you and caregivers everywhere. So until next time, bye for now.